Coming to you from sunny California and the Great White North. Get ready. We are breaking down the obstacles on the Armchair Ninja Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Armchair Ninja Podcast. It is Monday, July 25th, 2016. My name is Rich, and with me this week is Bajan. How are you making out? Doing good, man. What's up? Dude, I'm dying of heat here. Like, it is so hot. And I know, 80-some degrees is not hot to you, but that is hot to me. Oh, God. Man, I it is it was legit 108 degrees two days ago out here in San Diego. I was dying. <laughs> so 80 degrees, I will take that any day. That is that is a nice, cool, chill weather. Uh, well, it's hot to me. And I didn't get to the beach yet today or anything to cool off, so I'm just dying here. But we're going to get through this. Uh, I think if the uh, the Spartans can climb these walls and suffer through these giant tire swings i think we can uh, get this thing recorded right man watching this episode i was I, like it was getting me excited like i am so ready to train for some of my upcoming spartan uh but i i i think this was a really good episode i feel like the winners were kind of telegraphed how do you feel about that not at all actually i totally don't agree really? on that i so thought team grit because they've been so vocal on social media and i just see team grit team grit everywhere that i thought oh that's why they've been doing that because they won the whole thing and i was really surprised when they didn't in the end oh man i i'd say two-thirds of the episode in, i was like man man team, team grit has a chance you know there, there's a few teams that have a chance it's pretty even but when we started going in that last heat I, it was pretty obvious for me who was going to win uh but I will say this, I was pleasantly surprised of the teams that made it to the finals. Um, I think, wh- what's the team with Hunter? Is that Muddy Minglers? Yeah, that's them. I, I think they made a huge, huge mistake um, with having an injured runner on their team. I, I don't know what they were thinking with that. That That is just such a terrible mistake. Because just looking at these obstacles, like you can just name three obstacles, or it's like if you have a twisted ankle, you're not getting through that thing. It's just not going to happen. So I don't know what they're thinking with that. Well, here's here's the thing. So I I agree with you 100, percent and I don't know if it's the same reason though, because they made it pretty clear that they knew that bringing her meant that they weren't going to win. They basically kind of agreed that they would rather compete with her and lose than compete with somebody else. Now, it's a sweet sentiment, and to say that the money doesn't matter and all this stuff. But to me, you're putting her in an awful position of worsening her injury because you guys are being so nice to her. Like, you just let her sit aside, win her the money, (laughs) and like, I don't know, I didn't understand it. I thought, is this a Spartan thing that you just... You grit through. You got to push through. I, to me, I feel like they put pressure on her to keep going when she really should have been resting, and they could go win for her. You know, as a as a boost instead. Yeah, I mean, um, they had the opportunity to just be like, "Hey, you're injured. Sit it out. We'll run it for you, and you'll get better." Like sometimes somebody's too tough for their own good. And and this is a perfect example of it where, yeah, she might have felt fine, you know, um, running the course to a certain degree, or like afterwards, you know, stretching. And she's like, oh, it's healing up. I'll be fine. But it it's not going to do well if you're dropping down like a 16 foot wall and stuff like this, you know, like it's going to get progressively much, much worse. Good honor for for pushing through as far as she did. But I, I just don't know. It was kind of strange. I, I I felt it was unnecessary, like just an unnecessary situation that shouldn't have been there. Um, so anyway, looking at the the teams that were there, so the first heat we had Bounce Squad, Money Minglers, and the American Dream Team. Uh, I have to say, knowing the teams better now, like having this second episode with them in it, uh, it actually did make it a little more exciting. I actually really uh, enjoyed the races more. Yeah, yeah, you're invested in the teams. Like, we we were all familiar with all the teams and everything. It was quite nice. Um, man, I was rooting for that American Dream team. I love Vidal so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what did you think of the new obstacles they stuck in? The 16-foot wall and the giant tire swing? Eh, I mean, eh. eh. <laughs> like really it's really one it's really one obstacle and that i really loved i loved the t- the tire swing but my big problem was is that i was expecting 
at least a few more obstacles being brought into the final. I mean, they just brought in realistically one new obstacle. I I don't consider that 16 foot wall that much of a difference, really. So I don't know. It it, it was whatever for me. That that tire swing though, we'll talk about in depth later because I really enjoyed that. It really played a major part. But I felt like if they had three or four more obstacles like that tire swing where it made a huge difference in the shift of placement in the teams, that would make an amazing episode. And that's really what um, this show should have been about beforehand. There should have been much more consequence to these obstacles. Yeah, I mean, so here, here's the thing with giant tire swing. It, it really did make some big shifts in it. Um, I don't know if it's that one obstacle that was so exhausting, but did you... It was it just me or did they seem insanely tired compared to the the other heats that we've seen? Like they looked absolutely spent at the end of each of these races. Everybody did. I mean, yeah, but I, I it wasn't really glaring to me. Maybe I wasn't looking out for it. But I will say I can understand why that tire swing is so brutally difficult looking at. I've never I've never done anything like that, so I can't, you know, speak from personal experience but just knowing what's involved with that that looks absolutely brutal and i was so happy they had it so i don't want to disparage it at all because i love that element of the show i absolutely loved that obstacle but i felt like there should have been more obstacles like that right like we're on a competition show for a quarter million dollars what's going on why are we having just a a mile long race this whole season i've just been like man (laughs) <laughs> I should apply for this dank show. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I have a much better chance of getting some money at this show than American Ninja Warrior. You know what I mean? So, uh, I don't know, man. You know, at least they had, I mean, we finally got our wish as far as, it wasn't the lake swing or the lake, but it, we got to see the, you miss the pad, you go back, you miss the pad, you go back. That was, I think that added a lot. I think it would have added a lot. Yeah. On the other one. That's the thing, right? Like, they finally had consequence to an obstacle. <laughs> it should have been that way for a bunch of these different obstacles. And we saw even er- later on in this episode where they had that lake swing. Once again, um, I think it was the uh, Team Grit was just like, eh, everybody just get on and get in the water and just swim to it. Because who cares? I love the... Uh at the end of the tire swing so they would shoot a couple people across and then one person would have to do it solo i didn't see how they could possibly do it but they managed to do it better than the people that went first well really man um you know for me watching it the the technique involved in doing the tire swing was pretty like for me it was very obvious and i was and it was interesting because i didn't really see many people figuring it out very quickly like a lot of teams had a really tough time trying to get through that obstacle so so i'm just curious how do you think you're supposed to do the tire swing no they had to jump before it stopped like before it reached its apex or you lost all your momentum it seemed that way no that's definitely a major part of it but the other thing is i it's a lot easier from what i've seen to do it solo actually than having two people on it and i think that's where a lot of people um are kind of messing up and i understand why you'd want to have two people on the side and s- help your momentum swinging back to le- um, fourth but the thing is is that that tire is 400 pounds and it's a giant tractor tire so the more weight you have on that tractor it's going to kind of impact the momentum it's just going to like weigh you down um it would help a lot more having less weight on top of that tire and having more people push and pull you and just getting that fast momentum for you to shoot off of it the 400 pound tire itself is going to be enough momentum and weight momentum to just swing you side to side so any extra weight on top of it isn't really going to help anything makes some sense yeah for sure i thought they needed more people pulling but they mentioned that having less people on the tire would actually make it easier to move too so yeah yeah, and you saw you saw it in the final heat where um, they they finally figured it out where you had um, I think just one team and it was a team that like failed it at the very or it was like the very last place um, you know with the two people on top of it swinging side to side because it'll it'll help you swing a little bit but it won't help you swing upwards um, like both ways getting kind of like a kip up um, on the on the ropes so that that's kind of like the issue and. 
I, I felt like a lot of teams or people were very, very hesitant, as you alluded to before, in jumping off that tire. And it's very important that you jump off while it's going upwards and forwards, rather than as soon as it breaks that momentum and starts going backwards. I felt like that's when people were jumping. And I'm like, no, that's not going to help you at all. <laughs> yeah, use it. Let it shoot you forward. It didn't make a lot of sense. But I'm also not on this tire trying to judge when to jump. You know, it's I'm, it can't be easy. No, it it can't be easy, and it's hard for me to, like, just judge too much because, like, this is not an obstacle I've ever done, so it's easy to, like, just, you know, well, we are the Armchair Ninja podcast, but, like, armchair quarterback, you know? (laughs) Like, it's like, oh, of course, you you should do it like that. But, you know, I can't really talk because... For me, it was pretty self-explanatory um, just looking at that obstacle. Even before people were running it, it I, like, I already knew what I would do in that situation, and it was pretty much how to do it. But I, I'm curious to see how other people s- perceived it. So if there are listeners, um, shoot us an uh, email or you know hit us up on um, Instagram, Twitter, or any of that. Let us know how you do it or how you saw it, you know? Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, I found they were extra aggressive this this episode too like they i guess because the money was a lot closer i was about to say quarter million dollars i'd I'd be quite aggressive (laughs) i mean like isaiah's like shoving them along and you know hunter's screaming at them they're like they're going a lot harder than normal so the muddy maglers did end up winning the first heat uh and then (laughs) he's hunter actually apologizing to him like sorry i screamed at you guys he says it at the end of the whole thing (laughs) yeah yeah but were there any things in that um was there anything stand out for that first heat for you? Because, I don't know. It was it was pretty rudimentary, but I do like the fact that they did focus more on the course. It was still annoying. They still had vignettes, like, halfway through the course. And I'm just like, come on, guys. But I, I really enjoyed seeing Hunter, especially. And it, it wasn't just Hunter. I, actually, the entire team, they are really tough. Like, I, I really like that team a lot, man. Yeah, it wasn't just him. Everybody was like yelling at each other and shoving, and it was crazy. We had Amber from Bounce Squad injure her ankle, and then uh, the Dream Team was like carrying their teammate, and it was just injury prone this whole episode, really, because people were going so hard that it was bound to happen, basically. Yeah, but th- honestly, that comes in that comes with the territory with Spartan, you know, um, a lot of these obstacles you, you can get injured. And when running the races, you actually see quite a few people, um, injured and, you know, have to make it off to the sidelines. Uh, I did like the atomic wedgie that they gave their teammate as they went over oh, the wall. Oh <laughs> man, that was brutal, right? Like that wasn't, <laughs> that was not some like small old wedgie. Like they crammed that, the, that guy, that poor guy's like shorts all the way up. Like, on both ways, too. Like, there was one guy pulling it, like, almost above his head. And then there was, like, somebody off on the side also giving him a wedgie. I'm like, come on. Like, grab his leg. <laughs> Something else, please. Poor guy. Um, the only other thing I noted from that was uh, Hunter lifting the log by himself. So And when they uh, they cut to the team, he could actually swear. <laughs> He's like that guy is strong yeah hunter is just he beast moded that log like that guy is so obscenely strong and we like later on I, like i don't want to keep doing these two weeks man i don't know how you feel this is death but i think during the down season um of american ninja warrior we need to like um go back to the actual spartan finals that aired this week and cover that and just see how like spartan or um hunter and videl and everybody did i think that would be really fun especially by the fact that we're actually familiar with these names now yeah definitely definitely gonna do that we are done with the two episodes a week (laughs) but we will go back in the off season to do this yay i can sleep again (laughs) <laughs> can have a life again <laughs> i'm sure you got even worse man <laughs> well that's the thing every day it's either okay so we're watching an episode we're recording an episode or i'm editing and posting like it's every day of the week now which is <laughs> it, which is okay but it doesn't leave a lot of extra room for other things so yeah so as that was actually uh so the end of heat one we started into heat two my daughter actually Hang walked on, into before the room. before we do one more thing i gotta give a yeah. shout out to this really fun uh fun and scary moment of uh I, I forgot her name but the older woman on hunter's team she like falls trying to get on the log and uh, or uh, the tire swing and the tire like 
as just a terrifying, like, deadly force comes rolling back near her face while she's on the slip wall, uh, or on, like, the slippery part, and Hunter has to, like, hold her down, <laughs> and, like, he almost gets smashed in the face by the tire. That was terrifying. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, I was feeling the same thing. Like, oh god, stay down, stay down, stay down. <laughs> yeah, like, don't try to get up, man. If that four hundred pound tire were to smack either of them in the face, that would have been really, really bad. Yeah, they'd be eating pudding for a few weeks, I think. Yeah, sorry, I just had to include that. That was such a that was that was a that was a moment right there. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, if we go to as we went into heat two, my daughter actually got home. Uh, and came in and started watching the show. She actually really liked it. My youngest daughter, she actually said she liked it better than Ninja. That's awesome. Uh, go figure. Yeah. So then we moved on to the Heat 2. Uh, we had Joy Cox actually out uh, from her injury, which makes sense, although I was a little sad to see that happen. Yeah, uh, it so made the free perfect spirits sense. were down. You know, yeah. this this was interesting because I was really worried going into this. And the the whole, like, I remember this whole week, I'm like, man... I, I could see them doing well, Free Spirit, but Joy Cox is a big question mark because those those injuries can be pretty serious for a course like this. And I'm glad they brought up the fact that, hey, they have alternates. And, um, you know, that played an interesting factor, especially for, you know, Muddy Minglers later on in their choice. So, yeah, it, it, it's even looking back, it's even more daunting of a decision for them. I don't... I didn't. I don't think they're very fair to the alternate either. Like they seem to pin a lot of it on her, which it didn't seem like she was doing bad at all. No, that was weird, right? Like she wasn't. She probably wasn't training for this. Like she's like just there as a friend. She's in shape, but she's probably not crazy training. So I think she did amazingly well for just her whole situation. Plus she was five three. Like you know a, a lot of, like they they would always like knock her on some of these obstacles that like really makes you like have to like use a lot of leg strength or arm strength that's like what do you what do you expect from her yeah i don't know it was like she was one step behind anytime she was you know one step behind that was it they circle her they point arrows at her like look this is the reason that they're not making it through <laughs> like yeah i don't think that was fair at all no i mean would, would you rather have an injured joy cox try it like that's not that's not gonna do any better what did you think of them going into the wrong lane on the lake crossing like team grit like drifting into the other lane i felt really bad for free spirit i'll tell you that <laughs> yeah that was uh like grant's even yelling at them like get out of the way i love you ninjas but get out of the way yeah like <laughs> what the heck man <laughs> yeah i don't i don't know what they can do in those situations really i mean you can't really penalize a team for drifting too far uh, so at that point the comeback kids actually went from third to first because of that whole rig and roll yeah you know it, comeback kids really they kind of like fill in their name right because they were were really kind of slept on this whole season i mean we we have to just say it like we might be some of the worst prognosticators there are because every time we choose a team to win it is like the kiss of death like we are the worst man <laughs> but, hey, we picked the finalists we did pretty good i think yeah we, we picked the finalists i guess but like we can never like choose these winners ever <laughs> but um yeah comeback kids man I, I i really enjoyed them when they first got on and i think it, it might have to do with just the whole tv element of it because they are more soft-spoken of why they didn't get more airtime leading into the finals but i i felt like going into the finals was pretty pretty clear they're going to uh have a very good chance of winning uh, this uh, well, this race here was like really close too. Like it was the closest one we've had. They all end up at the thing together. Uh, they're hitting the spear throws at the same time. Like it was a really, really intense race. Yeah, it was fun, man. Um, yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say like I forgot. <laughs> I'm like, uh... <laughs> uh, what did you think? Would Lance had to come back to help Kevin Bull? I thought that was strange, and then he had to redo the jump again. Yeah, that was that was actually really smart on their part because I feel like you'd have somebody would have a really tough time trying to swing by themselves, especially with no momentum. Like it's one thing where you're already playing off the momentum of the swings beforehand, but if the if the if the tire is stalled and it's just not moving, you're gonna have a really tough time swinging that thing. So it was really smart. It was unfortunate that Lance Peak has had to go back and like redo it, but it was it was good foresight for them to instantly make that adjustment and uh, do that. 
I was a little surprised to see uh, Kevin holding up the team at the dunk walls. Like he was really out of breath and trying to to get himself together to go under. Yeah, it was really interesting. Like the, the rest of the team was already at the middle middle wall, and Kevin Bull was barely just like inching his way down the <laughs> into the water. Uh, it, it, it's it's really interesting, more just because this this situations happened before in the season, so uh, clearly they weren't able to adjust. But it might be something where you know adrenaline takes hold over, and you feel like you can keep going, but you kind of just blow yourself out. Yeah, they don't really have to do, I mean, they have endurance, they have a different kind of endurance they have to do. There's not a whole lot of running. The whole course is not that long uh, on Ninja Warrior. So I guess they're just not quite uh, as used to it. And then trying to hold your breath and go under the water, that's got to be really hard to do. Yeah, it all plays down to training. Plus, another element that, um, you know, might have just been understated is the fact that Kevin Bull was the main person pulling the tire. And that is a 400-pound tire. Um and I think in this race, they had a few people on the tire at once a few times. So it, it could just be an accumulation of him just burning out his legs uh, with that whole tire pull, you know, pull, um, push and pull um, doing it. And then having to do it both twice on the tire and then him having to run a few um, like bit I, I i can't say a few miles i was about to say a few miles but this whole course is just like one mile i think so just just a uh, run a little bit with his burned out legs and maybe he was just completely winded by that point yeah must be uh but we got to see crazy craver scramble up everyone on the slip wall like guys nuts i love neil craver this guy was so awesome both neil craver and grant mccartney were so fun to watch this episode man because neil craver is just like I don't know. He kind of reminds me of like a little tiny lizard just scavenging through like um, on the ground. Just like he's always flying, doing something on, uh, near the ground. And Grant McCartney was just straight up beast moding. You know, he did uh, the same thing that Hunter did on the um, on the timber log. Just one man hoisting that log up. Like Grant McCartney is deceptively just must be super muscular because <laughs> this guy keeps beast moding through these courses. So it was really fun to see the dynamic of these two. Unfortunately, the free spirits didn't make it through. Uh, comeback kids made it first, as we said, uh, and Team Grit got the second uh, spot, the wild card spot. Yeah, did you see how good comeback kids were when it come to, came to the slip wall? Like they were picture perfect both times they did the slip wall, where they knew exactly how to do it. Um, that's one of the things where technique really mattered a lot, and in the most vital obstacle there was, where it really deemed upon um, technique, they were absolutely flawless doing it. Yeah, I definitely noticed that. It was hard to miss because they were so, like you said, picture perfect. I think I even wrote that down. Have a perfect job. Yeah, like you, you can't do it any more efficiently than it seemed like the way they did it. Yeah, it seemed like all the other teams were kind of just like athletically trying to muscle through it, you know? Like they had some technique involved, but it was much more based upon luck and just like some athletic guy doing like a big jump or doing something, right? Team or the comeback kids, it wasn't like any of them were trying to do something super athletic or anything. It's just, we're going to stack up on each other. We're going to have perfect placement. We're going to trust in each other. And I think that plays a vital part as well. And we're just going to get through this super quick and easy, um, having perf- picture perfect technique. I really loved that aspect. And plus, it was kind of nice at the very end, just seeing the the Spartan team beat out both Ninja Warrior teams. Part of me was kind of, like, happy about that. I thought that might be the case. I figured you you might like that. Yeah, I was like, yeah, that's right. (laughs) The guy even commented along those lines that, you know, this is, you know, this isn't Ninja. This is Spartan, and that's what we do. Mm -hmm. Uh, But, yeah, it was a good race, a really good race, and then led to the finals, which I was really looking forward to. Both of our teams, Muddy Minglers and Team Grit versus the Comeback Kids. Yeah, I still wish American Dream Team made it. (laughs) I <laughs> love that team. <laughs> uh, yeah, they were a good team for sure. And they did change up a little bit for the very final. They had to do five spears. That was a pretty minor change overall, I would say. Oh, wow. What an adjustment. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, my God, Bajon's going to be happy. They totally changed the course. They got to do five spears now. Yeah. How crazy can it get? Like, slow down, guys. Don't Don't get too hardcore on us. Five spears. Ooh. Uh, the uh, Muddy Minglers 
uh, decided, as we talked about earlier, we don't have to rehash that whole thing. Stephanie injured her ankle, but was running anyway. Uh, what again. a terrible idea. <laughs> so they were lagging behind almost instantly and pretty much the whole time. Um, Hunter trying to do the log traverse by himself, basically. That was pretty interesting. Like their whole, The whole team is hanging down, like dead hanging, and he's trying to muscle through the whole thing. It, it, it was weird just because those those things look quite heavy, especially with the rest of the team on it, right? Yeah, like, the, it's just, you know, there's only so much strength you can have to do stuff like that. Yeah, I, th- I think that's a situation where, you know, being, being muscular and tough, it, it kind of, like, you feel like you can do something where it's almost going to hinder the team, where it's like, no, rest of the team, especially the guys, come help me out, please. But let, let me bring up something. Up until this, up, uh, this point... It was kind of even. I felt like the comeback kids were kind of getting a lot of shine out of nowhere. And then halfway through this <laughs> this thing, all of a sudden, we just get a story, right? Hey, uh, it's the yeah, finals. Everybody's excited. I am, I am just glued to my television trying to figure out who wins. And what do we get? We get a nice breast story about a young lady who, who gets married too early has a divorce, meets a, a guy, you know, training uh, for Spartan, and then they get married. Wh- what? Who cares? Why am I watching this? Wh- why is this happening? I was like, wh- you know what I'm going to do, Rich? You know what I'm going to do? The next, like, in, in a month when I'm doing the Spartan finals out in, you know, the Spartan Bees out in Hawaii and everything, everybody's traveling to, do, to get to the finals. They're doing the Spartan Bees. They're killing themselves. Everything. We get to maybe halfway through. We get to Death Mountain or one of the super hard obstacles where we're all just killing each other. And, and we're just all panting and dying. And everybody's about to race on through, get to the finals. I'm going to stop everybody dead in their tracks. I'm like, everybody, hang on. Hang on. I need to tell you all a five-minute story about how I met my girlfriend, because this is important. (laughs) And now is the time to tell it. Yes, now is the time, because according to the Spartan people, this is the time to tell everybody how I met my dang girlfriend. I I, I couldn't even believe it. Like, who cares? It's not even an interesting story. She got divorced, (laughs) and she met a new guy. I'm sorry. No, I don't care. Uh, that's fair. I wish I did think that that story was probably the least interesting one they've ever shown on this thing. Dude, I damn near had a brand aneurysm watching that. I'm like, why? Like, <laughs> we're at the finals of the entire show, and they're trying to make me care about this? No. Like, it is making me incredibly annoyed. <laughs> but it, for me, I was like, well, they're giving a lot of shine to a bunch of people that, you know, clearly don't have really interesting, th- or, I, I, like, you could just tell that much of an interesting story. So there's only got to be one reason why they're doing it. Plus, compared to the other two teams, it was kind of obvious to me. I'm like, well, sizing them up, there's not many new obstacles. I can kind of figure this out. Yeah, they also talked about the guy, his father was an IT manager and left there, and now he's working at a grocery store. So he was going to give him some money so he could go look for a new job. But I, why wouldn't you just do that anyway? I'm confused. Yeah, it's clear they're trying to make, you know, storyline out of something. Dude, I am sweating here. I, was, I, I got so angry. <laughs> like, I am just sweating profusely right now. <laughs> <laughs> I am a hot mess. Like, legit, literally a hot mess right now. Uh, <laughs> okay. But, <laughs> okay, I don't want to be too negative but on I did- that. <laughs> so, no. <laughs> But I did like the uh, on the on the tire swing again, right? I, I love that obstacle. It made it really entertaining watching the comeback kids versus grit on that that yeah. portion. How amazing would it be if we had like two or three more obstacles like that? Because it's not a situation where it's like there's not obstacles that like it's not something where you really have to think about it. Like if you look at the Spartan race obstacles out there, there's plenty of obstacles that they can make to be super difficult, just like that tire swing. So, like, it would really help if they had more stuff like that. See, I thought a lot of them wouldn't play well on TV, that they were good obstacles or exhausting and things, but is there just... Like, what would be a good... Can you give us an example? What would be one that you would think would be really interesting to see? Well, for one, the rock Claire, uh, rock carry. I, I forget the real name, but you fill up a bucket of rocks, uh, or, uh, yeah, rocks into a bucket, and you have to carry it up a mountain. 
and That's it just specifically drains- the one I was thinking of that would not play well on TV. That who wants to watch someone carry a bucket of rocks? Like seriously, you're like you got to have a better one than that. Yeah, good point. Although I, I'll tell you that that one's just brutal. Uh, let's see. So yeah, why not have something like the rope traverse, right? Where they have it in Spartans, where you it's kind of like the the log one, but it's a long rope, and you have to climb it super far up, like with your legs. And um, sometimes it'll go super high up, like maybe fifteen feet. Uh, so you have to like just climb up this rope going horizontally. Drains you out. It's a good team element, something like that, or maybe like the ringer. Um, that we've seen a few times on American Ninja Warrior where it's different pegs and rings, but sometimes they're kind of like hang up on ropes and you have to have your whole team get through something like that. You know, all these kind of suck. <laughs> yeah. Or if they, I mean, they could rip off mud run or, uh, there was a tough mudder, I guess too, if they really had to. Yeah. Do tough mudder, get electroshock therapy, get, oh my God, my, <laughs> you know what? It's not even difficult, but for the reactions, I kind of want to see people uh, go through the uh, Arctic Enema. It's an obstacle where it's just a, a giant pit filled with ice water, like sub-zero temperatures. It is brutal. It's almost like a mix between that and the dunk walls because you have to submerge yourself under a large plank, kind of like the dunk walls, but it's all ice water. I want to see something like that. Make it tough. I don't know. I want one of those right now, actually. <laughs> that'd be nice really yeah right but, well, now i think i could go for one of those i i say it'd be nice but then i've been oh yeah it sucks but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah there there's always obstacles that they can make that um they can make it more team based with more consequence even the the obstacles that we've seen on this show can be have much more consequence involved with it for instance uh you know we always bring up the log swing and the uh or P-Swing, or whatever it's called, you know, um, where there's no consequence, but Spear Throw can have more consequence, the Herc Hoist can have much more consequence, there, there's quite a few that, you know, they kind of give them the benefit of the doubt, and I feel like if it's if you want it to be for a quarter million dollars, you gotta make it a lot harder. Yeah, so if they do come back, we'll, uh, we'll be expecting some changes, I, ex- you know, it's first season it was pretty good i have to say i didn't i didn't hate it um we didn't give the results but if you if you're listening to us i'm sure you figured out by now the comeback kids did win but yeah i, I don't pretty know easily I, too com- compared to the other teams i mean the the money minglers as you can imagine failed uh, or had to drop out after the the tire swing what, is it called the tire swing yeah it's <laughs> called like the tire swing okay it is called the tire swing I, I i and for me i completely agree and understand why i'm so happy they did that because i did not want to see that poor woman try to get past that jump like th- she could have really really hurt herself on that thing uh and after that you know just come back kids we're just going to trounce true grit on that final obstacle yeah they kind of did they i mean they did make it there but you know that once they were there first they had the technique down so well that there was no catching up. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, overall, I enjoyed the season. I had had a rough start and it had some rough patches, but I enjoyed it. If it comes back on again, I'll definitely watch it. Yeah, the show was was fine. It, it's interesting. I felt like the the production of the show was the biggest, um, I guess, folly of the entire of the entire thing. The the race itself was, even though I had some qualms with it, it was decent. You know, they could de- have definitely made it a show and a competition. But the production and how these these really terrible choices they made in terms of presenting the teams were, were what really made a big problem with the show. And it's something that can easily be remedied next season. So I really hope um, they take in a lot of feedback from different fans and everything and they adjust for next season because i i'm still very optimistic that this can be an amazing and amazing show and sometimes it takes some time you know american ninja warrior was not perfect the first two or three seasons but it got there and spartan can definitely be there as well yeah i think they just had too many teams they're trying to do too much with too many teams and they should have just if they shortened each episode down to or not shortened it. If they kept it at an hour, but only had three teams run, you could give some backstory at the beginning of it, not in the middle of it, definitely not at the end of it, when we're mm-hmm. trying to see who wins. And, you know, 
make us care within the first 20 minutes and then focus on the race and we get to see how they did against each other i, I don't i don't i just don't know why they made some of the decisions they did didn't make yeah good sense. point and honestly for me i i would i think i'd enjoy it a whole lot more if it was more individual based with different top level spartan racers and it doesn't have to be champions it could be regular people but you know uh something like that or do it in different heats right so even separate oh, that point. have have a beginner heat and an elite yeah race. That, that's, it gets, go ahead sorry I, I was gonna say that's actually a really good idea and i and they they kind of switch that up for different obstacle races also where it's like you know um uh, people over 50 you know um even a, even if they wanted to a teenager heat you know like i i think different sit- groups like that would actually be quite fun that's a good idea yeah actually and it would give a good point of comparison right you watch the average joes go through and the top time is 25 minutes right and then you send the elites through and you see that they're racing and you see them do the obstacles at at their level and you get that point of comparison like oh my god do you see how fast they did that compared to the ones before and you see their finishing time is you know 15 minutes instead of 25 you know you get that wow they like that's the level that they're at and you get a better appreciation for it by seeing people struggling through the first time yeah number one suggestion that i can make though is switch up the obstacles every episode make it new make it fun it doesn't have to be every obstacle but at least give us something new every obstacle that would make a huge huge impact my big suggestion would be the one that i made last week i think it was where they should have it branch out if they don't want to switch up the obstacles have two paths one more difficult and more tiring maybe and the other one easier but longer and that way they're constantly having to choose and that way you don't know what obstacles they're going to face or and if you have a couple branches like that then it really adds a lot of variety Mm -hmm. i love that idea as well so that is it for this week and that is it for our coverage of spartan uh ultimate team challenge Yay! Yeah! <laughs> Woo! Woo! I feel like we did our own Spartan with this show. <laughs> yeah, kind of. It, it was uh, definitely a thing. By the way, I'm rewatching just an amazing shot of the Comeback Kids at top of the slip wall celebrating, and then Team Grit <laughs> crumbling into a heat at the very bottom of it. What it an well amazing timed. shot. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was a moment for sure. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, you know, Spurn, we, we got through it. It was fun times. I still have a lot of stories to tell, but I didn't want to make it about me. So, well, I, I think I might tell you um, off air, Rich. <laughs> sure, sure. And maybe we'll, uh, maybe once you actually do run your Spartan, we'll have an episode. We should be in the off season, right? Or we can do it in the off season. We oh. can have you uh, recount your uh, your performance this year. Oh, boy. Uh, so if you'd like to reach out to us, uh, you can reach us at ninjapodcast.com. You can email us at rich at ninjapodcast.com. And on Twitter and Instagram, we are at ninjapodcast. And Bijan, if they want to reach out to you directly, how do they do that? Hit me up at Twitter and Instagram at Bijan151, B I J A N 151. So once again, thank you all for listening, and I hope you have a great week. <laughs> Peace, y'all.